you satisfy I am empty but I know your love does not run dry so I wait for you this morning I want to give you an assurance that God has already stepped into your future and he's already provided every answer that you could have ever needed from him no matter what that need is this morning my heart is just aching for you because I know that you need something so desperate from God and you've even been crying out for this for so long and you wonder when God when your request has not missed his ear, church, and he's heard it every time. So we're going to sing this chorus one more time. And at the cross I bow my knee, where your blood was shed for me, there's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave.
Lord, for the next few moments of time, God, that you have captivated our attention, Lord, we say have your way. Have your way in everything that we do, God, that you would be glorified this morning, God. Lord, that there's nowhere we could go that would escape your love. This morning, we surrender to you, and we praise you, Jesus, for you're worthy to be praised. And your children agree, and they all say together, Amen. I was waking up, and I just, I just had a message that the Lord just dropped into my spirit, and all he told me was, go ask your father. And I said, Lord, what are you, where are you going with that? You know, I want to be attentive and obedient to whatever the Lord lays on our hearts, right? Amen. We all want to listen and do what the Lord calls us to do. And he said, we need to remember who our father is. And when we need things and when we need direction and wisdom and guidance, so many times he's the last one we go to. We will exhaust all of our measures in life and then, and then when nothing else worked, we'll go ask our father. But God said, I have something so much more brilliant than that. Why don't you start with me? And then I will guide you and I will direct you in the way that you should go. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would decrease me and increase yourself, Lord, so that every word that is spoken, God, would come straight out of the throne of heaven. God, that you see each and every one of your beautiful children right where they are. And you know the point of their need this morning, God. And I just speak life over this house today, God. That your word's going to come alive and speak such wisdom into us today, God. That when we leave out of here, God, we'll be changed from the inside out. And God, we give you praise and we give you glory. And I thank you for your word this morning. Hallelujah. If you ever watched old movies or back in the black and white days, the kids would always go up to their parents and they'd be like, Mom, 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 can I get blah, 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 this or that? Can I, can I buy the new race car, the new remote control race car? And what would the mother always say? Go ask your father. Hey, can I go spend the night with Jenny? Go ask your father. You ever had that happen? Go ask your father. I see it all the time in the... In the film, in Isaiah chapter 48, 17, it says, This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. This morning... <laughs> Pastor was funny because he said, well, you know, in order to have a good sermon, you have to have points. And I said, ooh, points. Yeah, I should probably think about points and an outline because, you know, I am kind of get down a rabbit trail. I get real excited and I just start uh, talking. So I was thinking about the scriptures that the Lord had given to me and then thinking, well, Lord, what would you want to say about that scripture in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17? So I do. I have points. And the first one is, that God wants to teach you. God wants to teach me. He wants to teach you. His word is alive and his truth is in it. In the scriptures, God says he wants us to be like ch little children, right? Everybody remember reading that at some point in time? Have you ever wondered, why did God tell you why did God tell you, Philip, to be like a little child? That doesn't really make a lot of sense now, does it, seeing as we're adults, those of us who are adults. But God told us, I want you, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. 
When you're there, say amen. Matthew chapter 18, verse 2 through 4, says, He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Now that was an interesting point. Why do I have to be like a child? I didn't want to be. I wouldn't want to go back to be a child again. A, a little one. Any adults want to go backwards and do this all over again? That's interactive. That was like a question. You want to do it again, Thomas? I don't want to do it again. I'm so excited to be a grown-up. I love being an adult. But the Lord said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like a lot little child, you're never going to enter he heaven. Why did God say that? Well, I actually have the answer for you this morning. Because children are dependent on their parents. Matrisa, you've got this sweet little baby here. He needs you for everything. Everything. He needs you to eat, to feed him, to change him, right, Bobby? To do all the things that he needs. He's depending on you to take care of him. Then when he gets a little older, you teach him things. They learn how to feed themselves. They learn how to go potty on their own. Praise God for that. They get a little older. They start learning how to dress themselves. Do you get where I'm going? But all the while still being dependent on their parents. But as a good, loving parent, they're going to teach that child how to grow and mature, right? And to become a man, to become a useful, productive citizen, paying their taxes, getting a good job, getting married, having a family of their own. Do you see the cycle continues? So I go back to the same question. Why does God want you to be like a little child? Because he needs you to depend on him for everything. We have become a self-made generation. I got that job. I started that company. I made that money. I won that award. I got those A's. Who gave you the ability to get the A's? Who gave you the knowledge to start your own business? Who did any of that? Your father? That you agree with that, it's true. Because he's in things. Did I not just tell you? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It said, nothing was made that has been made. Nothing. That means not one thing. Nothing. So would your child get some money that he earned from doing dishes and walk to Walmart and go buy their own toy on their own? Would they do that? Would AJ get to do that? No. What's he going to do? He's going to ask his mother, Mom, can you take me to Walmart to get a toy because I've earned some money? Would a right? child just go spend the night with a friend? They better not. In my house, they're going to get in a whole mess of trouble. They're going to ask permission. They're going to consult in all things. I'm going somewhere with this. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Believe that you've received it. How do you pray? You, you get before who? Your father. You ask your father. You make petitions of your father. You tell him how much you love him. So the first thing was that God wants to teach you. The second thing of going and asking your father is because God wants to prepare you. How many of you believe you're being prepared for something? You are not here on accident. 
There was not some cosmic explosion that just caused you to be. Mine and Sister Betty's favorite scripture is Psalms 139, 14. It says, I will praise the Lord for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What that means was God saw every day of your life before one day even came to be, whether your parents agree with that or not. God saw, and he planned a future for you. So he wants to prepare you for your future. Do you agree with that? He wants to prepare you. Everything I'm saying, I want you to back up with the scriptures. I'm reading it out of the NIV text. I know some of you have the King James or the New King James Version, but my text is coming out of the NIV. But John chapter 16, verse 24 says, Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name, but ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. There are times in life that we actually have no idea what to do. You ever been there? I mean, honestly, you just don't know what to do. There was a circumstance in my life where I just, I did not know. I had owned my own business, and it was not doing well at all. It was not doing well at all. And so I couldn't tell. Is the enemy fighting against me, or is God trying to close the door? Can anybody understand where I'm going? I didn't know if I was supposed to fight or if I was supposed to surrender. So I'm in this turmoil in my spirit. What do I do, God? Because if you'll just tell me what to do, I'll do it. Just tell me what to do. I would ask my father, God, help me. I need your wisdom. I need your direction. I don't know what to do. And I would just keep going back saying, God, I know you have not left me because your word said you would never leave me. You would never forsake me. You see me at the point of my need. And God, I need you to reveal what to do. Sometimes we become so close to a situation, we don't know what to do. Take a look at this next slide. Aaron and I have been real excited. We've been watching this new series on Netflix called Brain Games. Super cool show. Basically what you're seeing here, two squares. In life, we look at a situation and we think we know exactly what we're looking at, right? We're looking at a darker gray square and we're looking at a lighter gray square, right? If you've ever seen this before, you'll know that these squares are the exact same color. They are not lighter than the other. The top square and the bottom square are the exact same color. But you're looking at it and you're too close to the situation. You need some help to decipher the real answer. How do you get that in life? You ask your father, God, what do you want me to do? Lord, how should I proceed with this situation? Should I live here? Should I live there? What should I do? If you'll allow him, God will point you in the right direction. Hold up your pinky or your pointer finger and cover that white line. You see it? They're the same color. But it's not until you get a little different direction, a new perspective. That's what happens when you ask the Father what to do. He makes it clear. He shows you the way you should go. Because we can figure out our own way, right? And sometimes when we think we figured it out, we did make a choice that was good. But God would have made it more clear and better if you would have consulted him. I'm first. as guilty as the next person because I'm, I'm a real proactive person. You'd probably never believe that with knowing me. But if I see something, I pretty much am going to try to figure out how to fix it. And God has said, don't. I'll do it. Especially here in the church, if there's a hole that needs to be filled, I'm like, well, I can do that. Well, I can do that. Right, Trish? Aren't you the same way? Well, well I'll do that. I can do that. But we can't. 
That's why God created all of you. Because many hands make light work. Together we can do more things effectively. But sometimes we need new perspective. Amen? When you ask your father, he'll show you what you should do. This is when remaining close to the father becomes paramount in your life. You'll see something one way and actually it's a completely different thing. But you were too close to the situation. God does want to help you, prepare you for all of life's difficult situations. Church, I wish I could tell you. James, I wish I could tell you there'll never be trouble in life. But I can't give you that assurance. God never gave us that assurance in his word. That we would never have trouble. But what he did say was when we had trouble, he would be there to help us overcome. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world you'll have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Do you know why he did that? He did that for you. He did that because he was compelled for love for you. Those storms of life that are going to come you know you need to be prepared and God's going to help you prepare you for whatever comes your way when you ask the Father he'll help prepare you for everything that you have need of amen being prepared is not a bad thing how many of you know that your pastor is very prepared whoa let me tell you he is so prepared he cracks me up sometimes. I mean, I won't even tell you what's in our garage, but we're going to be okay for a while if anything happens. So being prepared is not a bad thing. It's not like you're walking around waiting for some giant axe to fall on you at any time. Amen? That's not what God was implying when he wrote those powerful words in John chapter 16, verse 33. But what he was saying is that when that trouble comes, he's going to be right there beside you. You are not going to be alone. You are not going to have to figure this out on your own. Okay, so let's put it in a different term. In the trunk of your car, you have a spare tire and a tire jack, right? Maybe if you're super prepared, you even have some jumper cables. Okay? Everybody with me? So, is it a lack of faith that you have those items in your car? Is that a lack of faith? I mean, because why would you have that in your car if you didn't think that you were going to get a flat? It's because you're prepared. You're not expecting that you're going to have a flat tire today, right? But what you're saying is, if I should... Because it does happen, I'm going to be ready to fix it. I use that. I thought Jeb would really get a kick out of that because he keeps trying to teach me how to change a tire. And I'm like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to call you and you'll fix it. I mean, since we were 18 years old, he's like, I need to show you how to change a tire. No, I don't want to know. I refuse to know anything about this process. But in my car, I have a spare tire and a jack and a cell phone. (laughs) This is exactly what God's wanting to do for you. He's just wanting to show you that if you'll ask him, if you'll get before him, if you'll give him time every day in his word and in prayer and through the fellowship of beautiful believers that he's going to equip you and teach you and prepare you to handle anything our kids just got back from youth camp you were being equipped how to go back to school 
as an effective witness, to not be okay with the status quo, but, but to decide to shine in your atmosphere, to decide to stand out amongst the hallways and say, no, I'm, I'm, I believe in Christ. I don't think that's right. To be set apart. It wasn't just for kickball and soccer and all the fun, wonderful things. There was more to it. Because we can have fun in God's presence, amen? But there's more. There's more. Let God prepare you. Because contrary to popular belief, He wants to bless you. It is His desire and His plan to bless you, church. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks you for a fish, would give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What I love about that, let's just say that I want a gift. Let me use an example. Let's say Haley wants the new pair of Ugg boots. I think I may have got that right. But she hasn't talked to her dad in a month. She's mad at him. And she won't talk to her mother either. She won't even acknowledge that she's there. But boy, does she need those boots. Do you think, just go with me for a minute, that Haley's going to be able to walk up to her daddy and say, after she hasn't spent any time with him or talked to him, maybe she's even a little cross with him, and say, Daddy, I need some boots. Her dad is going to look at her and say, And? What? You think I'm going to get you some boots? Sister, you're mistaken. Right? You haven't even told me you love me? You want to tell me good morning? How are you, Dad? Just, I want some boots? It doesn't work like that, church. Guess what? It doesn't work like that with God either. You can't go through your whole life just swimming along, moving through the course of life, never telling him, good morning, I love you. How are you doing, Dad? Spending time in his word. But then you have a need, a great desperate need. Jesus! You cry out, I need you. And he says, what? I've been here all this time. You didn't even said hello to me. Good morning. You just think you can rub. Rub that little jar. Rub that little container and think I'm just going to pop out and answer all your needs? What? Doesn't that sound ridiculous? When you put it like that, but God wants to bless you. How will he bless you if you're not spending time with him? Go ask your father. Be with your father. I want to tell you this morning, you got a father who will never let you down. He will never disappoint you. He will never break your heart. He will be there for you through everything. Through everything. You may not have a good relationship. Maybe you have a father. But he's not really been very valuable in your life. I want to encourage you that you have a father in heaven who wants to lavish such love upon you today. There's a scripture in 2 Timothy. I'm sorry, I got you all over the word because what I'm saying lines up with the word. I've got somewhere I'm going here. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Go ahead and turn there. I think we'll have it overhead for you. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 through 17. 
It says all scripture. Everybody say that with me. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God, that's you, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Say what you will, come at me with whatever statement about man wrote the book. I'm telling you, all scripture is God breathed. If you don't believe that, you're probably sitting in the wrong church. Because we believe it's all God breathed from the beginning to the end. And it says it's useful. How many of you want to get your hands on a tool that's useful? Would a hammer help you change your flat tire? By no means. It will help me vent some frustration on the tire. But I'm not going to get that tire changed any quicker with that hammer in my hand. Right? So God's saying his scriptures are useful for you. Why are they useful? Because they're going to teach you. They'll rebuke you. We don't like that word at all. But it's actually a good thing when we step out of line and God says, Whoa! Uh-uh. You can't be doing that. I love it when God corrects me. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that you may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So God... What was the first thing he wanted to do? He wanted to teach you. He wants to prepare you. He wants to equip you. I want to be thoroughly equipped to do the work that God has called me to do. If he says to go minister here or there, I want to do, be able to do that. Let's say you need a new roof on your house. Or let's say your home computer crashes. You drop your iPhone, someone ran it over, it doesn't work anymore. Who are you going to call? For your roof? You're gonna call the roofer. For your computer? You'll call the geek squad, right? and say, man, my computer's broken. Help me. Would you go to a doctor and ask him about your car trouble? Anybody? Would you show the clerk at Walmart this spot on your arm? Anybody? Okay. So why do we go seeking help from everywhere and leave out the one who made it all? It doesn't make sense. No way, no how am I showing the clerk at Walmart a medical problem I may be having. I needed a haircut. So I went to J.C. Penney's to get a haircut. And... I told the little girl what I needed done to my hair, and she said, okay. And so she washed me up and was trim, trim, trimming, and she got this look on her face, this real sick look, and I literally could watch all the color leave her face, which then made me very sick. I was like, oh my goodness, something's happened. She says, I'll be right back. And I'm like, oh, no. I wish I had a picture, because I did take one. And she came back with a manager. And they said, Miss Dotson? I said, they said, well, she's cut a little too high on the back of your hair. And I said, well, what does that mean? She said, it means... We're going to have to cut your hair a lot shorter than you wanted. Do you remember that? 
I had to get my hair cut all the way up to here. And I have a face that doesn't lend itself very well to super, super short hair. Do I, Pastor Jeb? Uh-huh. So I've learned my story, my point in making that story is I will always ask before anybody cuts my hair now. Because I said to her, I said, oh my goodness, I was not as wonderful as I am now. I said, oh my goodness, have you ever cut hair before? And she said, well, I did watch some videos. This reminded me of the Holiday Inn commercials. Anybody remember that, that promotion of, you know, some guy was in the surgery room doing surgery and they're like, doctor? No, but I did stay in the Holiday Inn Express. Well, that's not good enough. She was not equipped to cut my hair. A few videos did not make her equipped to cut my hair. God wants us to be equipped so that we're not found in that very same situation. Do you understand? What are you going to do if somebody comes up to you because they know that you've been with Jesus? They can see it on your face that you love God. It's obvious that you're a believer. They're going to come up to you and they're going to say, Jenny, I have a problem and it's big and I need your help. If we have not spent time with the Father and been in His Word and been in prayer and prepared our hearts, how will we help those in need around us? Isn't that what we were called to do? It's more than just coming into church once a week on a Sunday. This is your preparation. That is your work field. This is where you get ready to go out there and make a How difference. Can people who are struggling and hurting seek godly advice from you if you haven't been with the Father? What would you tell them? How would you guide them? What would you say? Would you know what to do? Would you know how to lead someone to Christ if they said, Listen, I can tell you've been with God. I haven't. I need to get right with the Lord. What would, would you do? Would you know what to say? Would you know what to do? It's coming. We're in a time, church, where people need answers and they know you've got them. What will you do without having been with the Father? He wants to equip you. If we really want to be effective in our walk with the Lord, we have to spend time equipping ourselves in prayer spending time in the Word and with each other. Don't forsake the fellowship of yourself with other believers. This is a wonderful atmosphere. So God's revealing that He's more than just words on a page, right? He showed you. He wants to teach you. He wants to prepare you. He wants to equip you. He does not desire to be a stranger to you. He does not want to just hear you on a Sunday morning. It's a daily walk, church. And not only that, it's a fun walk. It's not a drag. It's not a burden. It's an honor and a privilege to be called his children. I want to awaken a hunger inside of you this morning that says, I want that for my life. And if you don't have it, if you've never asked Christ to be your Savior, today I want you to make sure that you don't leave this place without knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that if God were to call your number, that you would be with him in glory today. John chapter 15, verse 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Do you know why he said that? 
Because those Ugg boots weren't quite what he was talking about. He said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, those boots won't be the top priority of life. He's going to provide them anyway. You'll be thinking on things that please the Father. And he said, you can ask me whatever you wish. I'm going to do it for you because I love you so much. When your kids do something awesome, let's just say you woke up and, my Lord, the dishes were put in that plastic box called a dishwasher, and you didn't have to tell them to do it. Or the bed was made, or the room was clean, and the clothes were put away, and you didn't have to say anything at all? What? It happens. What do you want to do for your kids? Something amazing. Something special. Take them to a movie. Take them out to lunch. Get them some boots. Haley, do you want some boots? That's how God feels about you. That's what God wants to do for you. When we do what it is that he's asked us to do, which is not complicated, church. It's not too much. He longs to bless you, provide for you, meet every need that you have according to his glorious riches in heaven, right? My final point is that God wants to release you. John 14, verse 13 and 14 says, Whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, this is... I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. There was a song in the hymnals called Trust and Obey, and it goes, Trust and obey. What does it say? For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey, right? Go ask your father. Go ask your father. Because once he's taught you, prepared you, and equipped you, you're ready to do what it is he's made you for, which is to be a witness to those who are lost and hurting, to be a blessing to your family of believers, to be available to answer the call. Throughout your day, there's many things that you do that I'll never know, that you do for God. Acts of service, things that we'll never know, but you don't do it so that I can see it. Because he saw it. He saw everything. Everything that was done in secret, he saw it. He wants to release you into your calling because you were called for a purpose. So before we go any further, there's many of you, myself included, that sometimes the clutter, there's so much clutter in front of you, you just don't even know where to begin. There's just so much, just so much around. Just, it's everywhere. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, I want that. I want to be that person. Seriously, I want to be that person. I want to be prepared and equipped, and I want to be teachable, and I want to be able to hear his voice and answer his call. And when he says to go, I want to go. But I have so much, so much around me. I just don't even know how to clear it out to be able to even hear I want it, though. I really want it. Today was custom designed just for you. It was handpicked for you. Because God does want to teach you and prepare you and equip you and release you, church. There's a book I've been reading called Clear the Stage. 
And the whole purpose of the book is making room for God. Because we filled our day with everything but God. You can go through an entire expanse of your morning from the time you woke up and began your coffee to the time you laid your head on your pillow. And then before you even knew it, the best thing you could get out, if you got that out at all, was, Good night, Lord, I love you. I'm going to try to do better tomorrow. We move from one situation to another. We're putting one fire out to another. Parents with kids, we're just running and we're running and we're running and if we're working, we're running. and It's exhausting. We need to clear the stage, church. We need to reprioritize. Get a new perspective. The most important thing we can do together this morning is allow God the room in our hearts, in our lives, to do what he's called us to do. Here in just a bit, Tammy's going to fire up a video that I want you to watch. And I have some direction for you. Thomas is going to turn off all the lights. When that video is playing, as an act of pure surrender at some point during this video... I would like to ask you to come down to the front. I would like to ask you to yield your heart to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. You may have never, ever in your whole life ever come up to the altar, ever. And I'm asking you to trust me today because I've already been to the Father on your behalf. And he's going to meet you here. And he is going to meet you at the point of your need this morning, if you'll allow him. Go ask your father. It's more than words. It's a relationship. You have a best friend. He wants to be that for you. He wants to be closer than a brother. This morning, if you would say, Vanessa, I, I loved what you said, but I don't know this Jesus that you speak of. I want to, though. That sounds great. I would love to know that my life had purpose. We talked about that last week, walking with purpose. You have a purpose and a plan for your life. It's bigger than you'll ever know, and it's glorious. It's wonderful. It's full of excitement. Adventure. But if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all of these things I've said to you mean nothing. They don't mean anything. So this morning, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you say, man, I've got to have that. I want that. I want to know that. I'd like everybody to close your eyes and bow your heads, and I don't want a single person looking around if that's you this morning and you feel your heart pounding in your chest and you're thinking man I, that is me I, I, I need to know Jesus I need to know this Jesus because I want to live a life of purpose and I don't want to live a life that's any more confusing than it is for me right now lift up your hands to the Lord and he wants to set you free today Lift up those hands where I can see them. I see those hands. I see those hands. Anybody else, I don't want to miss an opportunity. I don't want you to leave out of here not getting from God what he's promised to give you today. Church, let us pray together. For those of you who have raised your hands, As an act of surrender, I just want you to stand right where you are. You don't have to come forward. Just stand. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner and that I am in need of you, Lord. Father God, I accept you into my heart today. And I don't want to live another day without you. I believe that you came to die for me. 
I accept that you died on the cross and that on the third day you rose for me. And today I'm a new creation in you. Help me, Lord, today. Help me tomorrow. Help me to follow you, God. Help me to hear from you. Lord, allow me to be taught by you. I surrender my life to you today. And I am never going to be the same again. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Rejoice for those today. Hallelujah! The next thing's for you. As this song starts playing, make your way to the front. And you cry out to God and you let him know what you need as this video is about to start playing. Don't leave here without getting what you need from him.
surrounding me in every season I know you love me I know you cross I bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what can separate me go before me you shield my way your hands uphold me I know you cross I bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what can separate me now you tore the veil you When you said that it is done, you tore the veil, you made a way. When you said that it is done, and at the cross I bowed my knee. Where your blood was shed for me, there's no greater love than this. We just need prayer. If you just begin to make your way forward, we want to meet your need and agree with you in prayer by the Holy Spirit that he would just invade your life and meet your need. If you're in need of healing today, come forward. We want to pray with you. The Spirit is here, and you just have to come forward for your need to be met, and we will agree in prayer with you today. Father God, we praise your holy name. We thank you for this time of ministry, God. We thank you for the word. God, we thank you for the worship. We thank you for the Spirit in this house. God, that we would just continue through you and in you. Lord, I pray that you will just meet the needs of the people today. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.